I'll show you how to create this step by step. Keep watching. Everybody, welcome. Thanks so much for joining me. My name is Soraya. Today I'll be showing you step by step how I created this lovely painting. It's so unique and it was so much fun. So keep watching to see how I did this. <laughs> well, that's a good start. I have just a little bit of this gold, but it's beautiful and shiny. And then I thought I'd try and kind of make her a redhead. <laughs> I've got, oh, I've got this color here, which is basically, it is a very, home. Oh, it's going everywhere. I think it is a, uh, I'm not using that, it's too watery. Okay, I'm going to use this, which is a copper, that's better. You see that shine on it? I love that. These are all leftover paints, so I'm not even really sure what the, this color is. But it's pretty. And then I have, you know, this is just black. This is kind of thick, so I'm gonna add some water to it. Tiny bit of water probably even too much so as not to waste this other color which I think was also a copper lightens up the black a little bit and then I've just got some plain white this is artist acrylic artist loft acrylic white I'm gonna start pouring here and there I made a mistake in placing the camera so you don't see a lot on how I blew it out but it was very short and just hang in there and you'll be able to see the final result in just one sec. That is quite beautiful, I could tell. Wow. I was gonna swipe, but I'm not even gonna swipe. I think that looks gorgeous. I'm gonna just take you down so that you could see it. So yeah, I was going to um, swipe it, but look, I think this is gonna be gorgeous. Look at the shimmer. And once I remove the tape, you'll see the beautiful silhouette. And I think I might even um, enhance it a little bit. But I love the shape of this already. It's gorgeous, look at that. So just have to wait, it'll be just one second for you, probably a day for me. So I'll see you back here in a sec. So I decided I'm going to put some realistic bubbles and there's just different sizes. This is a cup that I'd used and a smaller one. and even smaller, so I'm just gonna trace around it and cut 
cut it out. And I'll do that for all of them. This took one day to um, dry completely. And it dried beautifully. Here we go. And I'm just gonna speed it up so you don't have to, whoops, I don't like the way that looks. There. And then I have an X-Acto knife to cut out the tape. And hopefully I can get it in a nice circle. I told you so. Oh, I told you so. I told you someday you'd come crawling back and ask me to take you in. I told you so, but you had to go. Now I found somebody new and you will never break my heart in two again. So here's the painting all dried up and I'm curious to see how it will be revealed. I'm just going to be going over the uh, bubbles that I created there once again just to define them a bit more and I really liked the uh, splash over uh, that went under the um, tape. I think it uh, created a really beautiful effect so I decided to leave it. Working on cleaning up the edges here. Uh, a lot of the uh, paint did get under the tape, so uh, just working on that to uh, get it crisp and clean looking. Because the paint seeped under, I just am using a little bit of the X-Acto knife to 
remove some of the uh, raised areas. All right, so here it is all done and I absolutely love it. I think it turned out great. I did add a little bit of gold highlight. You could see there and also in the figure. I think it needed that bit of shine. You could see that it shines so much better with that addition. But I think it looks wonderful. Just what I had in mind. And now I'm going to show you how I finish this painting. Okay, so once I'm ready to varnish the painting, I take out my Krylon Camar Varnish. It's non-yellowing. And uh, it says that it keeps a fresh from the palette look. It's for oil, acrylic, and watercolors. So give that a nice shake and start spraying. And that's it, a nice light coat to begin with. And I could, I would probably do that at least a second time and maybe a third. Um, you wanna keep a nice steady stream as you go along and uh, you let it dry completely before you add the next um, layer on. And that's it. And then I will show you my next step after I've done that. Okay, so the painting has um, been dry and that's been a few days, so it's ready to get wired. It has had its varnish like you saw, so I turn it around and this is what you'll need to wire it. Um, some measurement, a pencil, scissors, wires, I call these D-rings, they're the small size and a couple of screws and a screwdriver and a masking tape. So how you do this is you measure the canvas and <clears throat> pardon me, the canvas is 18 inches. And so you wanna do a third of a way down. So 18 inches would be six inches. That's the, a third of the way down. So I mark it on either side with the mat, uh, with the uh, pencil. And then I take a D-ring and I put it on that mark. And I take a screw with a screwdriver and go right in that hole. And I guess you could use an electric, but it's pretty easy to do. That's it, it's in there. Same thing with this side. These are wood screws. Since it's going through wood, you need that. It's a very easy process. Nice and tight. Okay, these are both done. Now what I do is I take some wire. This is galvanized steel wire and it's for 20 pounds. This is like probably a pound or two, not very much. So it's more than enough. So take it out and then put it at the bottom of that O-ring. You bend it and then under itself and keep going up and over, up and over. And there you go. Okay, and you do the same thing here and I just eyeball it. I cut it where I think it's gonna be. I usually cut it further than I need. Put it underneath and do the same thing. Down, up, down, up, all the way. Now you take your masking tape and you cut off a bit and you cover up that 
end piece because it's pretty sharp. You don't want anybody who's handling this to get hurt. So it covers that up, this sharp edge here. Do the same thing on the other side. Cover it up, and that's it. It's ready to be hung. That's it, done. And now I'll show you what I do next. Okay, so once the painting has been varnished, and it has been wired, I sign it. And I sign it on this bottom, this bottom side of the painting. So this is the front of the painting. I always sign it at the bottom right on the side. And that's all I do, sign my name there. And I sign Zizi. That's my painting name. And then I have one more step and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, and the last thing that I do is I print off on these labels, if you can see that, my name, Soraya Silvestri, in quotes, Zizi, artist, and then the name of the painting, Lady, in this case, 18 inches by 18 inches is the size of the canvas. And I put that on the back of the painting itself. Now normally you will have some kind of a bar or something, this one doesn't have it, so I put it at the bottom here, right there. And I'll do the same thing with the other label, right there. So you can see that it's got the name and the artist right inside there. And that's it. That's what I do when I finish a painting. Click on the link you see now to see more of my videos. I have a new Facebook group called Soraya Silvestri Artist Amazing Abstracts and Pores Promote Your Art. The link is in the description box below. Check it out.